I'm here with Chuck Wiseman, Wiseman Law Firm, and we're going to answer specific questions that you would have buying real estate in the low country of South Carolina, but you were afraid to ask. We've got some really good stuff, so stay tuned. So I'm here with Chuck Wiseman, Wiseman Law Firm. As a matter of fact, Wiseman Law Firm is sponsoring this video, but this is all part of this Low Country Connect uh, situation where we're working with the best professionals down here to help guide you to home ownership in the Low Country. So we thought it would be a really good subject. I asked Chuck to uh, come up with some questions he gets all the time. You see that? <laughs> and so <laughs> he's going <laughs> to go through these questions, which are actually really, really good. So uh, let's start off at the top. And uh, right. Well, first I have to yes. give my little legal disclaimer yes. that uh, this video here is for information purposes only. There you go. This does not create any sort of attorney-client uh, engagement, all the small print stuff that you that's, that's you, good. That's you that's normally good. that's yeah. you normally see. Well, we can jump right into it. The first question I get all the time uh, from a lot of my clients is, "Why on earth do I have to use an attorney to handle a real estate transaction so you get that in lot, South huh? Carolina all the time?" Really? Because okay. in a lot of states, attorneys yeah. are not involved in the real estate closing process. Right. Okay, uh, a lot of times. They are handled all through title companies sure. that will do right. every, I've had people ask me that every part of that process. Yeah. So a lot of my emails and a lot of my calls uh, with clients, that's kind of first off the bat. Yeah. Why do I have to get an attorney? And I think a lot of times they hear the word, do you have to get an attorney? People get a little more tense for some reason. I don't know. Yeah. Closing attorneys, we're good witches. You know, we do, yeah. we, we do, we do good stuff. Okay. Uh, but so just to answer that question, in South Carolina by law, it's required that attorneys are involved okay. uh, with real estate transaction. That is on a purchase. That is on a sale. That is even for uh, a refinance okay. with a home loan, uh, even with a home equity line of credit. Anytime they're recording documents, okay. like a mortgage and, mm -hmm. and deed conveyances, things like that, you have to have attorney involved. Okay. I also tell my clients, even in their other jurisdictions in other states, if they're going through a title company, mm -hmm. somewhere in that chain of who they're using, you're going to hit lawyer uh, <laughs> eventually. Even it's, though at state you don't have to use an attorney. They're right. somewhere in there. Somewhere in the yeah, title okay. company that they're using in the underwriting, things like that. You There, is, there are lawyers in the background okay. uh, in, involved. I, I'm, I'm, I would be willing to bet that and that is incidentally, the case. you're saying this because you've been practicing law on Hilton Head Island for how long? Uh, since 1999. Okay, so we've got a little history on the question. That's right, that's right. So another question I get a lot of times for a closing transaction is um, they want to know how late my offices are open for the handle of the closing transaction. Okay. Ideally, a lot of people like to use Fridays as a preferred closing day. Mm -hmm. And I get that if you're coming in, if you're driving in from, I don't know, Charlotte or Atlanta or something like that, in everyone's mind, it would be great to close on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. And then we have the whole weekend to make some... To yeah. make some fine tuning, some adjustments, right. do some improvements, and then we then we head back. Okay. Um, in theory, that always that always works. Friday for me, if you can avoid a Friday, I'd maybe say that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Just because if for some reason there is a hiccup on the closing right. day, you're out the whole you're out the whole weekend. It and, and things stack up. It's Friday. It can. Yeah. It sure. can. And it's sometimes it's hard to get answers. At four o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, right. you know, on a Friday, if you if you need that, right. But I also understand, hey, everyone has schedules and everyone has commitments, and a Friday is the day we do, you know, we do plenty of closings uh, on Friday. Yeah, sure, but there is a little bit of a process to our closings here in this area, and this is kind of unique to kind of like our local rules as closing attorneys and the closing process goes. We do not have generally round table closings, and that is that sellers and purchasers and agents all gather in a room yeah. and pass paper and pass right, keys and right. pass funds. That does not happen here. And I think it's because logistically, 
it's too hard to coordinate yeah, that sure. as people right. from all over the country right. are buying and selling That's properties right. in this area. So what happens is everyone coordinates with their respective council. Mm -hmm. So my clients will coordinate with me mm -hmm. as to when they will come and sign their documents or I will receive their documents. A lot of my clients don't even attend the closing because they're not here locally. Okay. And we can either do that by electronic means, we can do that by mail away closings or setting up uh, specific power of attorneys okay. to handle that transaction. Mm -hmm. But they will coordinate with me and then the other side, whether it be a seller or a purchaser, will coordinate with their counsel. We have people meeting at different times and sometimes and sometimes different sometimes different days. Okay. And so basically there is a little bit of lag from the time the documents are executed in my office to when those then get prepared, sent to lenders and other attorneys and things like that, until when the dust actually settles and we disperse. Mm -hmm. So it can be we can close at nine thirty in the morning. We may not be officially closed until eleven thirty, maybe until one o'clock. Until you get the funds. Until until we have the funds all right. all done. Right. So generally I always tell my clients it can take up to the day. That's to actually a get big deal. I hear that all the time. Well, we close. Why don't we get keys? What happened? Right. And I go, you know, I didn't get a commission check. What's going on? That's why. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So just know that it can take up to the whole day to you know get you in. And a lot of my clients on the purchaser side, I mean, they're planning to move in and stay yes. in their newly purchased home in paradise. Yeah. Paradise. Excuse me that day. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's even a little bit of urban camping on an air mattress, but yeah. they're, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, well, they're yeah, going, it's that. They're going, <laughs> they're going in. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of one of those, those things I get about timing a lot. Okay. And a little thing we were talking before, a little about the process that we do here with this. And we get contracts in with closing dates that are already predetermined between the parties. Right. In terms of the purchaser and seller and their back and forth negotiations, they get uh, together and get a closing date in mind that they want. I cannot tell you how many times I get contracts in and then speaking with my clients and they tell me on the day of closing, that's the day we're going to be on a European cruise or that's the weekend of my daughter's wedding. Right. Or some big life-changing event yeah. <laughs> that is going to make the closing that much more difficult. And that happens. I know life always gets in the way. Yeah. There is a process to what we do in I always tell clients, if there is something like that out there on the horizon, I need to know that. Yeah. And my team needs to know that as soon as possible yeah. Yeah. so we can get out in front of it. Because it can be done. It can you be done. You just need lead time. It just need lead time. Yeah. And you also have to make yourself available on the day of closing for this process to work itself out. Okay. Meaning, you know, I may need I may need you by your phone or by your computer. On the morning of your yeah sure <laughs> on the morning of your cruise or something yeah, like that yeah, for yeah. a little bit of time you definitely need some sort of internet or Wi-Fi connection uh, available to make right. that to make that happen but it can be done okay that's good all right anything else on there I got a lot of stuff I know uh, I got a we lot of might stuff. go we might uh, go two parts of this sure what part one and then I'll do the sequel. We got to make the sequel as good as the I love original. It. That's right. So, That's right. what are a couple of more questions you have? Uh, I have movers coming in on the day of closing at eight a.m. Uh, people schedule their move, you know, early, early, and they like to get out in front of that. But just know, back to our first, uh, the first issue we tackled right. uh, on the on the process. Sometimes, if it can be if it can be scheduled, maybe not the greatest idea to plan the movers on the day of just because okay. there's a little bit of that lag time and it's hard to coordinate that, you know, it's with a lot of moving the, parts. It's a lot of moving part, yeah. you know, with, with movers. Right. Um, you know, I definitely, if you have to do it, I would be pushing them back uh, later in the afternoon and then hopefully we can get you closed, you know, in Which the morning. Which would be ideal right. the next day. Next day. Maybe you spend come. the night in a hotel, make sure all the... Yes. T's across. I yes. Got it. Same thing with any sort of contractor work. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how many times people are telling me, hey, the contractor, we're putting in a new floor. Yeah. And they want to get started at nine o'clock in the morning. It happens all the time. When can I? All when, the time. When can, when can I get closed? Again, the day of closing probably just needs to be set aside for the closing process. Yeah. And if you can start all that work to be done. I would maybe plan to do it the next day or the day after. Or how about the agent said it's okay? 
Yeah, I get that a lot of time. Or a little, uh, a little bit more on that is, hey, we talked to the seller and they said it's okay for us to access and we could start doing improvements now. And what are you going to do about that? Yeah. I, I mean, I, what are you going to do? I generally would say no good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Right? Uh, don't start swinging hammers and ripping out floors yeah. until the dust settles and yeah. this is your property. Right. That's your that's right. That that you're working on. Because I, things can go wrong, delays, all of a sudden half the room's painted and then it falls apart or whatever, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And then the last one that I think is, is really great and it's so it's kind of silly, but it's it's kind of important all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Keys. The, the key game. How many times do you get do you Oh, they're ask, looking for keys. Where are the they're keys? They're looking for keys. Yeah. Where are the keys? When do I get my keys? Right. Um, and it's, it's really, uh, sometimes we have the play the key game, the key hunt. Sometimes keys are brought to my office ahead of time by agents they're dropped off. Or mm -hmm. I have my clients who are selling. When they come in and sign their documents, they will leave keys with me. That would, that's usually the certain that A lot of it, or a lot of times with the magic of lock boxes and things like that of yeah. technology. And now there's not a lot of keys out there in circulation. Everything is now a code. That's true. You know, and so... Yeah. What are the codes? Yeah. Uh, how do I, you know, how do I change the code on the lock right. and things like that? Those types of things, if just get out in front of, yeah. Because people, once they close, they want in and they right. want to start. They want to start the process. And I always tell people, have a key plan. Talk to your agent. Talk to me. Are you going to drop them off with me? Are you going to give your agent one key and all the keys, fobs, garage door openers? Will all of those be? On the kitchen it's counter. It's really the two agents that should organize that, right? That's maybe the best way to do yeah. it. And if you drop them off at the attorney's office, that's great. As long as everyone just communicates as to, I have the, you know, who yeah. has the keys. But a lot of, you know, a lot of times, and there are mailbox keys uh, here on the rental market properties, owner's classic keys. There, I mean, it's amazing of how many keys there yeah. really are on some of these yeah. some of these properties. A lot of times in my closings, people are pretty good about it. They're aware that they need to transfer the keys, garage door openers and all that, but there is a find the key program sometimes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. well, why don't we do this? This is, I think this is really good stuff. Um, I think we need to have a sequel uh, all right. to this. So uh, stay tuned. We'll put another video out with Chuck discussing uh, uh, these issues and maybe how to overcome things. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we thank you for watching. Uh, we use Chuck Wiseman all the time on our closings. He is on Hilton Head Island. He knows the drill. So I'm going to put Chuck's information down below in the video and you can ask Chuck direct questions with email, phone calls, things like that. So uh, anyway, uh, we thank you for watching and look for the sequel. Thank you.